Hi everyone and welcome to our new video training package of Abacus. Deflux subroutine in Abacus is a comprehensive and example-oriented package for all beginners and finite element users of Abacus. Let's look at its content in this 15 minutes demo. If you want to start analyzing your projects in Abacus, it is better to save your time by watching this demo and making your decision easier. Don't waste your time watching amateur and weak videos on YouTube. This package contains four lessons in 90 minutes with three workshops. Here I will present you the syllabus of each lesson and we can see some selected parts of them. In this package, we will explain the deflux and vdflux subroutines. The first is for a Bacchus standard solver and the latter for the explicit solver. In the first chapter, you will learn when you need to use these subroutines, how do they work and their uses. In the second chapter, we will explain how to use them including the subroutines interface, definition of each variable, optional and required variables that need to return to the subroutine and information variables. In the third chapter, we discuss the differences between deflux and vdflux subroutines Moreover, you will learn which one is better for each example. In the fourth chapter, converting deflux to vdflux and vice versa will be explained in detail. Also, we will present differences and resemblances between variables of two subroutines. Finally, in the last chapter, you'll learn tips and tricks in the graphical interface and input file. Furthermore, the defining outputs in the subroutines will be explained. In the end, workshops will be presented. To use the subroutines properly, first you need to learn to connect Abacus to Fortran and also be familiar with subroutines writing in Abacus. You can find the information you need on our website. Next, you start to use the package. Then, when you learn the package completely, for your information, you could get information about dload and vdload subroutine having resemblances with the deflux subroutine. This package contains more than 120 minutes of tutorial video, tips and required files to fully learn. Applicable examples for both subroutines along with all required tips and parameters will be presented. Moreover, all tutorial and text files will be at your disposal. Now we go through the first chapter. It talks about when we need to write the deflux and vdflux subroutine. One of the applications of deflux subroutine is in mechanized culinary industry for analyzing results of applied heat accurately. For example, imagine when you want to cook food, the heat needs to be enough and distributed uniformly. Maybe you want to apply your heat distribution on your model. As you can see, if you want to make a nice and well-cooked pizza, the heat must be applied properly. Now, where do these two subroutines stand in an abacus analysis? Imagine the problem is using the abacus standard solver. The software is starting to solve the equation and the equation does have some coefficients. According to general terms of finite element method, this equation is F equal KU, the famous equation of finite element. One of the coefficients that must be defined is element stiffness or K. The loading must be defined as well, so the equation F equal KU or R equal KC will be solved. 
If this variable is used for edge and has a 2D element, you can have a surface heat flux on the edge. You will have two directions, 1 and 2, which are specified in the first NDIM as before. And the components of each direction are specified in the second NDIM. This workshop will stimulate the welding process for two pieces with the same material. The welding will be at the edge of the two pieces with different dimensions. Here you can see the geometry specifications of these two pieces. The torch moves from bottom to top with the V-speed and generates heat. Each piece's mechanical and thermal properties are defined here under the material properties. We'll present further explanations in the graphical interface of the software. Note that the pieces will have heat transfer with the environment. This heat transfer involves radiation and convection processes. Now let's see the further theory of this simulation. See the figure on the right? The distribution of the heat generated by the welding pen is illustrated. We mentioned its value before. Now let's see more detail about the distribution in some relations. When the torch is moving, there will be different types of heat. So we named the front heat source QF and the rear heat source QR. As illustrated, the exponent of the exponential function is an ellipse function. Now let's start to write a subroutine for two welded pieces at the butt joint. Like before, first we have to copy the subroutine interface from the documentation into a new Fortran file. Like other subroutines, you can see the inputs and outputs in the first line. As you see, after writing the subroutine, the type of subroutine and then inputs and outputs are determined. Note that their definitions were presented before entirely as a PowerPoint. As you see, you can see the temperature changes in any element and integration point on any EL set you want. In this element at the beginning, the temperature is increasing. When the arc moves on the other elements, the temperature decreases gradually and becomes stable. In this workshop, we are going to simulate welding on two cylindrical parts. The laser moves peripherally at the junction of two semi-cylindrical pieces. If we consider the coordinate system in this place, the starting point of welding is in the coordinates shown here. Both parts have the same mechanical properties and are temperature dependent. The coordinates of each element must be specified in relation to the location of the arc. Consider arc is located in theta degree in relation to global x-axis. The chords gives us the coordinates of each element relative to the global coordinate system shown here. You can also see the primary and secondary positions as well here. It is the initial model with lower opacity. And it is the model position changes after analysis with higher opacity. So now we are able to simulate laser welding and see the results. I hope you enjoyed this workshop. In this workshop, we are going to simulate heat generation by a heat source on a steel plate. Note that this time we will use VD flux subroutine. This workshop contains four models, which will be explained in the next slide. You can see the geometric properties of the steel plate in the figure. 
All material properties are temperature independent. Select the thermal from category and choose the surface heat flux. Apply it on the whole surface which is done already and the magnitude is 1. So the output heat flux of the subroutine flux which is saved in the value variable would be the same as the applied thermal load on the surface. Another parameter we can check is the internal heat energy. The amount of heat energy applied to the model will change through time. So according to the equation Q equal MC multiplied to delta theta, M is the model mass, C stands for specific heat, and delta theta is the temperature changes. The amount of heat energy has to have increasing behavior. Now let's check it. From the results tab, select the history output, select the internal heat energy and click the plot. See as the temperature rises, the internal heat energy is increasing as well. I hope you have got enough information about this package. But don't worry at all. If you have any questions about this tutorial, ask us via support at caeassistant.com.